Currently, we see dysfunction in healthcare systems around the world, despite an exponentially growing knowledge base in medicine. Estimates indicate that 30% of healthcare spent is wasted. There's wide variation in both health outcomes achieved and costs across providers, regions, and countries. And costs are rising at an unsustainable rate, outpacing GDP despite pressure by governments and payers to control cost. We need a healthcare system where patients and stakeholders are aligned on the definition of success, that is, delivering outcomes that matter to patients at the lowest cost. This is value. Sylvie and Kabir are two retired adults about to start their journey through the healthcare system. Sylvie lives in the world we know today, while Kabir lives in the world of the future with a true value-based healthcare system. Kabir and Sylvie have been experiencing long-term hip pain. Hip replacement surgery is being considered. Sylvie is referred to a hospital near her home with favorable patient experience reports. Unfortunately, it has high readmission rates and performs a limited number of hip replacements per year. Readmission rate is the only quality metric that is measured by the surgical unit and this data is not available to the public. In contrast, Kabir and his primary care physician consult a website that compares hip replacement outcomes across all hospitals in the country. A hospital located an hour away is highly ranked with low readmission rates and scores highly in patient reported mobility post-surgery. Unfortunately, Sylvie cannot remember her full list of medications during the preoperative assessment this forces the surgeon to initiate an administrative procedure requiring her doctors to complete several forms. Scheduling Sylvie's surgery is delayed by a week. Kabir's surgeon asks for his consent to access his electronic medical record. The hospital system is linked with others in the region, allowing him to quickly gather all of Kabir's medical history from previous visits. Sylvie's surgeon selects a prosthesis that he's been working with in recent years and with which he's the most comfortable operating. For Kabir, on the other hand, a multidisciplinary clinical team with a surgeon, a geriatrician, and a physiotherapist discusses his mobility goals. Using hip for me a decision support tool, and noting that Kabir is a devoted cyclist, they agree on the best prosthesis. Kabir's doctor books the surgery with a colleague who has outstanding mobility outcomes with the chosen device. Sylvie's and Kabir's post-operative journeys are complicated when they contract an infection at the surgical site. Both must undergo additional surgery to replace the prosthesis. Sylvie's hospital operates under a fee-for-service reimbursement plan. Sylvie is required to pay a $4,000 copay while her insurance pays an additional $6,000. Kabir's surgery was charged as a bundled payment that included the cost of all interventions associated with his hip replacement, beginning with his preoperative appointment and including the second operation. At Kabir's hospital, the financial incentive to reduce post-operative infections is strong, and his infection is a rare exception. Sylvie's medical staff assumes Sylvie's rehabilitation spot will remain available even after the delay from the second surgery. Unfortunately, the bed is given to another patient. Sylvie is sent home after one extra day in the ward. However, she faints soon after coming home and returns to the hospital emergency room. Sylvie's stay is extended to five days before she feels comfortable to return home. In Kabir's case, the rehabilitation center was immediately alerted to ensure a spot is kept available. His medical team understands the importance of early rehabilitation. A delay has high chances of impairing the surgical outcomes for which the surgeon is responsible. Kabir's bundled payment includes the rehabilitation cost and is linked to patient outcomes, incentivizing the surgical department to collaborate closely with rehabilitation centers. Kabir's rehabilitation is successful, and he's able to begin cycling just six weeks post-surgery. Sylvie's experience is not the product of bad intentions, but the result of rational responses to the complex rules and incentives that have evolved over decades, leading to negative unintended consequences. A focus on value can transform Sylvie's story into Kabir's. 
To do so, we need a truly patient-centric healthcare system that starts with measuring health outcomes and combines informatics with key enablers and a supportive public policy environment. In the end, we would create an evolutionary healthcare system where outcomes transparency allows us to learn from systems around the world, identifying best practices and eliminating wasteful spending that does not drive value. This is the future of healthcare. This is value-based healthcare.